present the Chelsea Pearls and Christy Glass. Yay! Ooh, thanks, Red Bank. <laughs> thanks, Red Bank Bike. <laughs> that was perfect. So, what's so interesting is I, at Vogue Knitting Live 20. 17. Yeah. I sat down with you. Mm -hmm. Not you weren't there, no, but who it was Andrea? Andre, yeah. And Andre. I just sat down next to you and started chatting you up. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who each other were. You were eating was, Chick fil A. Probably. Because <laughs> you can't get any decent food at Vogue Nanny Live. <laughs> right, right. So I had to go out to Chick fil A and bring it back in. Right. And then we were chatting and I found out you owned a yarn shop and I said, Oh, you should be on my YouTube channel. And it was like yeah. Unequivocal. No. Yeah, I was like, no, I, I'm not. I was having a bad hair day. You know, I wasn't. My no. makeup wasn't on point. I had no highlighter on. And so now, right. a, year, a year later, look where we where we. Yeah. Been. A year later, here we are. So I'm here right. with the Chelsea Pearls. <laughs> Hello. So introduce yourselves. I'm, I always have to have a drink at the Chelsea. Yeah, Pearls, totally. So I got my. my I have my tea. miso. Usually, I have a kombucha, and you have your iced tea. But you got, you're like going rogue it's, today. It's a snowstorm. It's a it snowstorm. Is a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So introduce yourselves. Miriam always goes first. I always go first. Hi, I'm Miriam. Um, hmm. <laughs> you can find me at. <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> okay, so you can find me on Ravelry as Busy Mom 07755. You can find me on Instagram as Really Mirror Knits 2. Or you can find me teaching fourth grade. It all depends on where you're looking. <laughs> Aw, everyone remembers their fourth grade teacher. They do. She she has she has like a whole posse. Oh. She does. That's a good grade to teach mm -hmm. you They're to be fun. remembered. Mm -hmm. And who are you? I am Christina and I am the owner of Chelsea Yarns, co host of the Chelsea Pearls. And I'm on Instagram as Chelsea Yarns. Um, it's a fun fact, my name is also Christina. Is it? Really? Yeah, where did okay. Christy come from? Okay. I've just been called Christy my whole life. That's so yeah. fun. Yeah. See, so we have two Christy. Fun fact. So I want to know your individual fiber stories and then how you intersected. So why don't you start, Mary? Okay. Um, I started knitting. It was my second full-time teaching job. And one of the other teachers was a knitter. And she taught me to knit. And I was obsessed. It like right was, away. It was the eighties with oh, the big 80s. sweaters and all that Mohair. great stuff. Mohair, sequins, Mo. Annie Blatt, shoulder pads, oh, all that stuff. It was oh, Annie awesome. Blatt. And I loved it. I loved being able to make something that I could wear because I had tried my hand at sewing and the end result was not pretty. But this was something that I could do. And I really enjoyed it. Knit hard for several years then things kind of faded got married had a family started knitting again for the kids never had enough time to finish anything and got the bug again but there was a lack of yarn shops at that point in time mm. it was tough there were a couple of good places that ultimately closed and i was always on the lookout for something new something different and that's how I discovered Christina and Chelsea I remember Yarns. the first time she came into the store. We were, uh, we had just opened. We opened five years ago, March 3rd, and we did a knit along. I, I opened up online first, so we had an online store. And then I had asked Red Bank Mike, I said, Babe, can I open up a yarn shop? And he's like, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, um, Maybe you want to start online first. So I did, and I started online, and we got to the point of where he was helping on the weekends after work because I was inundated with orders, and it was it got it went from like one order to here really fast. So we needed a space, we needed more space because we ran out of space. So he said, "Okay, let's get a store." So I opened up in Cold Snack five years ago. It was March third on a Friday. We did a knit along of. Um, a three color cowl using Shibui Silk Cloud. And it was a it's the ombre. <laughs> it was sort of a fade. And she came in, she, this one, came in, got her colors. Oh, and they were gorgeous too. Oh, they were it was the new raspberry. raspberry. I remember, I remember the colors. One. I remember odd, like weird things of that. Some people, like my customers, I'll remember what they get. She comes back like two weeks later and it's all chewed and. and her dog Harley got to it, so she had to buy a full new Harley. cow. Harley. <laughs> Harley's bad. Yeah. He, he loves bad. yarn. He does. It's Carly or Harley? Harley. 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 And did you forgive Harley? 
Uh, yes, I have forgiven Harley. Still Since. have Harley. Uh, Harley. <laughs> He's bad, though. You have to watch the yarn. So you live in the neighborhood, then? You live, um, mm. I live not far from here, yeah. yeah. So when this opened as a brick and mortar, you were so happy. Mm -hmm. I was so excited because I had been following them. You were blogging. Mm -hmm. And I remember following the blog. That was how I found you. And mm -hmm. you knew it was a New Jersey business. I knew it was a New Jersey business. I knew it was a local business. I had tracked it down to... I had an approximate area. I was like a creepy stalker back then, too. And I had an approximate geographic area. Like, okay, I think she's coming out of close to where I work. Maybe I could go to work. For her, I would work for yarn. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I was following this one very closely, and all of a sudden, brick and mortar store. I was like, oh, even better. So was there like an announcement on the blog that that's how you figured yeah. it out? Yeah, I announced it um, probably December. I remember sometime mid December, I announced it that we were opening up our store March. For well, as soon as I knew it was like secure and mm -hmm. everything, it was fun. It, it's been. An amazing five years, I have to say. My whole, um, when you walk in, I wanted people to feel as comfortable as they do in their living room. Mm. I wanted the big farm table. Mm. I wanted the candy on the table, the candle burning. This is sort of like how my house is. Mm -hmm. And it's very inviting and people are always, you know, cut, well, not really anymore because I work a lot. But I was always entertaining and... Everyone always felt so nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we just had our five-year anniversary a few weeks ago. And the amount of people that came through those doors was so... I mean, it was. It made it... Yeah, it made it all worthwhile. It really did, right? I yeah, mean, it was... So many people. You know, people I haven't seen in years that came out to support me. And I was like, you know what? You know, sometimes you have a bad day at work. It's hard. You know, you, you screw something up. You do something wrong. I never quit. I always just keep going. Keep, keep. I'm, I'm like a grinder. Mm -hmm. That's what Red Bank Mike says. You're like a grinder. You just keep going. Mm -hmm. And seeing all those people come through those doors, like, oh, I couldn't, I, could, I didn't, never wanted to miss it. And I was like, you know, I really touched their lives. And yeah. that's, that's a special thing. So yeah. that's what makes this all worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love seeing the coverage of that on, I think it was just mostly on your Instagram, yeah. maybe a little bit in your podcast mm -hmm. too. And I just love seeing all the, the, you just seemed really overwhelmed and like almost oh. surprised. I was. You but know? the first day I opened, I was surprised. Yeah. I, my husband, Red Bank Mike said, you know, uh, we're going to be busy this weekend. And, and I said, no, I'm, we're not going to be busy. People don't know we're here. We're not going to be busy. He said, I, he said, I think there's going to be a lot of people. I yeah. said, a tad. Yeah. I don't think so. I think maybe three, four people will come, maybe. Yeah. It's like three, four people come, we have to go out of business. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just floored. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, we had a line of people, and I kept apologizing to people like, oh, I'm so sorry. I never anticipated anyone was going to be coming. Yeah. But yeah. everyone always makes fun of me and says, you know, Christina... Why would you think no one would come, even for the anniversary? I didn't ever thought. I never want to like go in saying, "Oh yeah, I, I have uh, tons of people are going yeah. to come." Yeah. I always think, "Oh, my friends will come, and a few people, yeah. and then anything else is wonderful." Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> called humility. Yes, and yes. it's that, a nice. it's a trait that is very desirable <laughs> and lovely. So well done. Thank you. Being Thank humble. you. So. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of a chest cold that I brought home from Scotland. From give me, Scotland. Give me a second. <laughs> mm. At least it wasn't, you know, a Scottish man in the I, suitcase. It could have been. <laughs> so many other things. I was there for St. Patrick's Day, and there could have been lots of shenanigans. The cold is the worst. Mm -hmm. No worries. So talk about your fiber story. How did we get from birth to opening? Uh, birth to story? opening. Well, mm -hmm. my mom, I knit when I was a little girl crocheted, you know, my aunt taught me and my grandmother taught me, but I never really took to it. Was this in New Jersey? Um, no, I grew up in Staten Island, mm -hmm. the rock, mm -hmm. as we like to, as Red Bank Mike likes to call it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really, you know, I did how everyone else did, you kind of just did. It wasn't really popular mm -hmm. until Sex in the City, mm -hmm. they were like really knitting oh, really? on Sex in the City. Oh, Sarah yeah. Jessica Parker was knitting away. Oh. You know, it was like the early, late 90s, early 2000s when it started, you had the eyelash yarn mm -hmm. and all that fancy, glittery, you know, posh stuff. I mean, Pearl Soho, I remember going to Pearl Soho when I moved back to America because I lived in London and that's when my mom came and 
showed me how to knit again. Mm-hmm. She went to a store in Staten Island and she learned to knit and said, you need to do this because it, I think you'll enjoy it. I did it and I became hooked. But when I lived in London, there was only Debbie Bliss, Noro, and Rowan, which, I mean, yeah, they're beautiful yarns, but that was it. And in the States, everyone had glitter and eyelash and ribbon and all this fancy stuff, and I wanted that. Mm-hmm. I still have some ribbon in the eye. Oh, please. <laughs> I have a ton of it. Because I used to come over, hoard the yarn, and then bring it back. Mm-hmm. And then when we moved back, all the stores started, you know, Vogue knitting. I mean, yes, the magazine was there, but it really became popular. Pearl Soho opened. I remember when Pearl Soho was on that street. Two separate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had like Pearl, the fabric, and then Pearl, the Pearl, yes, yarn. Yes, yes. And they had, you know, just a really, really teeny weeny store. They yeah. sold Rowan. I mean, hand dyed yarns weren't, uh, I think Malabrigo was one of the, Malabrigo mm-hmm. was so popular. Manos was so popular. Mm-hmm. I remember when Tosh was, you know, made in, and died in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, I've been addicted. I, Ravelry, I'm one of the first when mm-hmm. it was in beta. Yeah, I mean, amazing. Yeah, I'm hardcore. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm so, like this one. So you just, and how old was your son at this time? Because I feel like there's, and I want to know how, how old your kids were too when you kind of came back to it. Because I feel like there's a, I feel like there's a, a, a time when your kids are younger that it's just very like triage situation yeah. for a little bit yeah and then when you finally can kind of come back to yourself right is where i find some people rediscover it that's probably when i think he was first grade-ish mm-hmm. you know when when we moved back he went into the first grade and then i, I have sweaters i have yarn for sweaters i never finished because he outgrew them and mm-hmm. he would never wear anything mm-hmm. that i knit even now i mean i make hats for his friends and stuff and yeah. I'm like, yo, would you like one? No, I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) I think he thinks it's like homemade. You know, everyone else, like Miranda, she makes hats for all the girls. For your daughters? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. My guys were little, and I was trying to knit very unsuccessfully because I was trying to juggle two kids and working full time. And every time I turned around, they were dueling with my knitting needles. (laughs) And I would be missing the needles. That's how I started using circuits. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Because they would take the straight needles, and I figured I'll fix them. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the chance to do it probably until the kids hit their teens. Mm-hmm. And then I was able to refocus and get started again. Mm-hmm. Sitting in the mm-hmm. car waiting. and Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think my kids were probably, my youngest was probably first grade when I really sort of dove back into it. And then I had a baby, and she, she's a lot younger than the other two. And I was so excited when I figured out nursing and knitting. I was like, look at this. <laughs> I can just balance that boob in the right spot and I can knit while you eat. Well, now your so daughter happy. knits, right? She yeah, yeah, she's so, 12. Yeah, that's so cute. Yes. She makes, she has projects and yeah, things. Yeah, she's pretty good at it, but she goes in and out, you know, because it's so demanding mm-hmm. at school and practicing and she's on the swim team and just yeah. a lot's going on for her and she doesn't, she doesn't have to do it every day like I have to do right. it every day. Right. So she comes, she comes in and out. I think part of it is she realized she's the middle child, and if she really wants special attention, she's got to like do what I do. Right, right. Do you think that's part of it? <laughs> she yeah. has to. She has to go along with you to Rhinebeck uh-huh. and all that. But I mean, yeah. But she's good at it. Mm-hmm. Although she's not allowed to go to Rhinebeck yet. But she, we did go to Maryland Sheep Okay. That's where you yes, saw her. yeah, that's where I saw her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she's good at it. Like mm-hmm. she understands it, and I don't know if it's because I'm a pretty good knitter now, so I can teach her things. Whereas someone who can only make a scarf, they're only going to be able to teach a scarf. Right, right. So maybe that's why, but she really seems to, to get it, and she's a problem solver, that's which good. I could never do. But that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's great. awesome. Yeah. So anyway, so um, you came back to the States, and you dove into everything that was available here, Pearl yeah. Soho, et cetera. Yeah. And then, and then um, my son was probably seventh grade, I think, seventh grade. And that's, I wanted to create a place, like I said that I can go to, there was never really a place that was local that I could go to that, you know, had a you know, long table and meet fiber friends and, I mean, this table, how many friends have you met from here, you know, from just this table? There's people who sit down, right? Yes, and it's, we have a whole crew. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. And that's what I wanted to create. And when I opened the store, I said, you know, I could do this. 
I could take this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but why did you go online first? Talk about Cause, that. Because Red Bank Mike wanted me to dabble into it to see if I liked it. A little it. soft yeah, opening. Yeah, a little <laughs> soft opening into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big responsibility. It's a financial commitment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very expensive. Yeah, were you working before or were you... Did you when I had partner? my son, I... I you, you were know, a stay -at -home. I stay-at-home mom. And I, and I raised him. I said, you know what? I've raised you seven years. It was, you know, seven, seven grades. You're good. You're, yeah. you're on your own now. Mm -hmm. Well, they do really strike out a lot of independence at that age. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's when you start looking for something else. To do. Because it was boring. Mm -hmm. You know, I thank my, you know, I thank my lucky stars every day that I have this business. Now my son's at college, you know, a freshman in college. And, you know, the only one that's really missing out. Well, that's why Red Bank Mike's Windy Code is because, <laughs> you know, my son's at college. And you don't realize... You, this takes up so much of my time. It's great, you know. Mm -hmm. I bet it was an easier transition. It was. If you didn't have the business. Yeah, I, I can't imagine not working. Because you have an only child, only and so child. Yeah. you raise that child, and then now what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like Eighteen years of that. And Miriam over here, she's going to retire soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We keep we see, keep saying you have to retire so you can come hang out with us. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> so do you work here at the store? I do not work at the store. <laughs> I had my fifteen seconds of working she at the store. She worked for five minutes. It's yeah, it was overwhelming. Bad. It's it's overwhelming. You know what was that when you were in California? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was more than I anticipated. Yeah, it's kind talk of like, about that because I think a lot of us dream of having a yarn store. So what's your insight from taking yeah. over? So just to explain, Christina, world traveler, she went to Stitches West. Mm -hmm. And was that for fun or for, for fun. business? For, for fun. fun. And so you volunteered, right, to to talk I got about this. It. Thursday night. It's all good. I'm here anyway. I know this. And I'm thinking. I gave her the key. She's like, oh, I God, it's I official. I was so excited. It's like, I can come and play with the yarn anytime I want to. <laughs> I could sleep here if I really wanted to because I have the key. But... Um, there are certain things that I can do, and there are a lot of things that I can't do. Talk about the cans first. Um, I can ring the register. Okay. If, you know, okay, got this, $26, cha-ching, cha-ching, mm -hmm. that I can do, put the receipt over, that's great. You walk through the door, hi, how are you? Welcome to Chelsea Yarn, can I help you with anything? And then I have to pray that they say no, mm. because yeah. that's where the wheels come off. <laughs> you want me to pick a color? Do you like pink, black, and gray? Because that's my wheelhouse. <laughs> Why don't you see everyone wears baby pink everywhere you go? Because that's my favorite color. I mean, Christy, if you if you had to pick a color, if you owned a yarn shop, what colors would you, what would be your first choice? That's the thing, like right. pink. I, I just thought if I opened a yarn store, it would be All pink. pink yarn store. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting better. I'm trying to challenge myself this year. I bought yellow at uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, Wait, was it that, crazy. that no, yellow? Bird I bird. have that too. Yeah, yeah. that. I, well, I didn't buy it. I should have bought that. That sport is that the sport? I got the Aaron. Oh God, I'm so jealous. That was uh, what is I it got called? The last seven games. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yellow Brick Road. Yellow Brick Road. Their Aaron Wait. Yeah. So I got it in fingering because Creative CC has it in her oh, yeah, um, Sunset, Highway. Sunset Highway, and I have to do that now. Yeah, that'll be beautiful. Because yeah, I have so much time, I'm gonna find that too. Fingering white sweater. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, so the anyway. camps where you felt paralyzed by people asking for really personal help. Yeah. Um. Just basically, like, help me pick a color. Oh. Oh. Well, what do you normally <laughs> wear? Yeah. And Christina's very good at putting colors together mm -hmm. and seeing the potential. And I tend to have very limited focus. Mm. This is what I like. This is what I wear. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. If somebody else says, oh, you should try this, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. But I probably would not walk over there and pick those colors mm. for myself. So that was like the first bet. And to make matters even more trying, it was a customer I calling from Oklahoma oh, no. who wanted me to pick yarn for her. Mm -hmm. And her response was, well, Christina does it all the time. And it's like, but that's what Christina's good at. <laughs> this is not what I'm good at. So she was panicking. She I was, was texting panicking. Me. I'm like taking they want pictures, me to pick yarn. sending them to Christina. And this like, girl is work. on the phone with me for probably 40 minutes. I'm like, well, what color do you wear? And she's like, oh, Christina just put something together. It's fine. I'm not fussy. <laughs> and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. So did she have a project that she wanted to do? She, she had a cow that she wanted to make and she was just you know like just pick I'm like mm, if mm. I post something they'll call and say oh you posted blah 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 today I want it pick me something out pick out something for me and then ship it oh interesting I have a, a lo lot of customers like that so it's it's sort of like oh I want it in pink just give it to me in pink do you want you're in the mood for blues I'll go with the blues so she was like <gasps> 
<laughs> me, I think that's so fun. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I would like that. I was I was deer in the headlights. It was like, oh my god, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Okay. I can't really work here because I'm realizing, <laughs> like, mm, yeah, I really don't know enough about knitting to help people with their problems. You totally unless they drop do. a stitch. She totally okay, does. Okay, drop a stitch. There you go. You need to pick it back right. up. Or oh, I think you went the wrong way. That sort of thing mm -hmm. I can do. But there's a lot of things that are not quite in my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and I'm realizing those but are I think things it takes that practice. you need. It takes Probably. practice, you know, being in, you know, you're in it all day long, every day, you know, sometimes even when I work by myself, I don't like working by myself. Mm -hmm. I like the crutch of having someone with me. It's just sort of, second opinion. I, yeah, it's a second opinion. I mm -hmm. always ask second opinions. You See, know? but I don't have that fake it till you make it personality mm -hmm. where somebody can come in and say, oh yeah. These two colors are perfect together. You should buy this. Mm. I like those. Um, <laughs> they, they do look nice. They're right there. But you put, see? you pick them out. See? Um, I'm kind of like the, uh, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when I say, oh, I don't really work here. This is what she does. This is her famous line. I don't really work here. Yeah. Can I help you? And then when the going gets bail. tough, I bail oh, completely. Like, mm, no. Yeah, I don't Sorry, I don't really work here. I was just sitting in it. So that's her claim to fame. <laughs> My mom and I always say, I'm not from here. Like, <laughs> I'm not from here. Like, I don't know. I'm like, Mom, we're at Old Navy. They're talking about Old Navy stuff. Like, Old Navy's everywhere. You know, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. She's like, I'm just not from here. So just, you know, if she can't understand an accent oh or whatever, God, she's like, that's so I'm just not funny. from here. I love it. So funny. Um, well, I think that I too would be bogged down by all of the business side. The business side is hard. I mean, it's a lot of work. That's all it is. If you, I thought, and I say this to Andre, I'll never forget. She helped me set up the whole store and everything. And one day I went to her on the back deck, we were knitting and I said, I think I'm going to open up an online store. She's like, Oh, that sounds like fun. You know? So anyway, here we are setting up the store. I thought it was going to be Andre and I and a few customers maybe coming in, maybe not, and all the yarn around us and me knitting on projects all day. <laughs> in my little world, that's that's what I thought. I was like, oh, it's a perfect situation. If we want a snack, we could have a snack. We could have a coffee. We have a coffee machine back there. Needless to say, I was. it was, it is complete opposite. Mm -hmm. I never knit. Mm -hmm. I, I just, by the time I get home, sometimes I don't because, you know, you have to take care of the house and the things mm -hmm. and, you know, your life gets in the way. And sometimes when you're helping people at the table all day, the last thing you want to look at when you go home, sometimes you just want to like stare at the yeah. wall. Yeah. Yeah. You have like a little like Eastern thought meditation moment yeah. where you're like, let me just stare at the wall. Yeah. And not stare at yarn anymore. Well, your, your, your store is beautiful. Thank you. And how has it changed in five years or is it pretty much the same? It's evolved. I mean, it's changed with the yarns that we carry and the, I guess, projects that we're knitting. You know, we always knit with the top, whatever's in style, whatever's hot. So talk about the community that you have here. Like what, if people are, if they're going to adopt this as their local yarn shop, what happens here? Like what knit alongs, what knit nights? We what have classes? Thursday night um, is our late night and people come and hang out around the table. And really every day people come and hang out. There are certain people that come certain days. Mm -hmm. um, the big days would be like Thursday night. But then there's a group of ladies that come Friday and then Saturday's a huge day. Like the table is always packed and we're like two tables. but. You know, every day there's always a different group. Some people can't come Thursday or Saturday, so they then they create their own little Sunday group. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, some people work during the week, they're too tired to come out on the Thursday night. Sometimes Miriam, like, you know, you work all week, it's hard to, but people manage to find um, time to come and they really enjoy it. They have little knit alongs that they start by themselves. She always has her own she ever secret. She has something knit -along. secret that no one can look at. Yeah. Look in her bag. And that's what she's working Why on. Why the secret? She always she doesn't like, like a it. Secret. Yeah. She likes to have that privacy. Yeah. She doesn't like people looking so in her bag to see what she she's doing. She does. On the or she'll have a decoy project. Mm -hmm. She'll bring something to knit here, and she's working on the good stuff at home. Really? Yeah. She's funny like that. She's very funny. I do have a hard time socially knitting though because I I can't stay. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. No, that's it. Especially you have those garter stitch projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you're just knitting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, and now talk about when you started dyeing yarn. 
Why did you so feel compelled? And I, I, I'm really distracted by this in the bowl. I want to wear that. This one? No. The, the other one. one. So that's our is. Chelsea Mixer Duh hat. Yes, I need to wear this. While we talk about <laughs> is this your... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, talk about why you want to start dyeing yarn. So I started dyeing, uh, we were waiting on a delivery for one of our hand dyed yarns three years, in 2012. No, it was about three, three years ago or four years ago, long story short, uh, it was the wool walk and we needed to um, get a delivery of this yarn and it didn't show up or I found out it was, wasn't going to show up in time. So I was panicking and I said, I, I could do this. Oh yeah. I could do this. This is no problem. So I ordered the yarn, ordered the thing, and I'm artistic. I mean, I went to art school. It's like, you know, I know what I'm, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, here we go. So I start dabbling in. I bought a lot of Kool-Aid. I tried it out. I said, okay, I got this. Here I am, how many years later, and I think that that is the most, that's the most popular yarn at the shop. Your hand-dyed yarn? My hand-dyed yarn, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like crazy. It's, I put it in at, uh, secretly sometimes yeah. and it's gone. It's like, it just goes. People come in, they call, we talk about it on the podcast. I mean, I mean, I post it, they inbox me. It's, I can't keep up with the demand. I spent the time that you were away haunting the back office because I was sure you had left me yarn for the hipster. Oh, <laughs> all right. It's like, I saw it. I saw it in the pot. She sent me a picture of it. I know it's got to be here somewhere. She was it's dying crazy. some for me. It's and, crazy. And they I sold. Can't, so yeah, no, it's, it's, you put it down, it goes. It's, I mean, it's, it's a good feeling. It's a little overwhelming because it's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, a lot of work. Um, and now I, I, I used to dedicate Sundays to dying. That was my day off. I need one day. You have to have a yeah. one day. Otherwise, you get burnt out. I do all the social media. I do all the stores. So everything. But the dying is a lot of leg work yeah. and heavy lifting, pots of water. It's, you know, I'm in my workout clothes. Yeah. I'm dripping sweat by the time I'm done. But I enjoy it. I enjoy being creative. Um, it's, it sets me apart from everyone else. Yeah. And I love it. Okay, so you die once a week? Once, oh, sometimes twice a week, but definitely oh once a week. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I fill orders that I have online or I fill, I fill the shop. The shop's been bare for a while because um, we have a trunk show at Nitty City uh, next month and then we're doing the New Jersey Wool Walk. Wow. So, so you've been hoarding it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And people are like, where's all the yarn? <laughs> <laughs> but I actually made you a present. You did? Mm hmm. That's for you. And everything inside of it? Yeah. <laughs> because this feels very heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at her face! <laughs> oh my gosh. This is all for me? Yeah. Look at Is that not your color? I love it. <laughs> and it's so, it's so soft. What is in this? That's our single base. Oh my goodness. I can make a, I can make mm -hmm. a whole project. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Yes, I did. And, and that's from Red Bank Mike. Okay, so this, I have to talk about this because I still don't know what exactly <laughs> this is. <laughs> so Red Bank Mike that wanted me to give you that. That is a kahuna. Okay, so why is it called a kahuna? A, you have to ask Red Bank Mike that. <laughs> oh my gosh, but, this is such a nice so, present. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> because I've been trying to figure out. What I must it? have missed one of your podcast because I because then you were talking about the kahuna all the time I'm like I need to figure out what the kahuna, <laughs> what the kahuna is, kahuna what, is. So explain what this gorgeous amazing gift I just got <laughs> is so Red Bank Mike actually wanted to be here to give it to you but unfortunately his real job did get in the way that's right I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so what the kahuna I bought a cake over like last summer or the over the summer from skein cocaine mm -hmm. I bought a cake of yarn uh, I wanted to make crochet this blanket and it was like 20 skeins of yarn wound into a magic knot and it was all different colors. It to be like a wheel like this. Yeah. So you don't have, it's continuous. So you don't have mm -hmm. to change colors. It's all done for you. Did she have it in one of her auctions on Instagram? Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I saw it and I was like, oh, I want that. I want to make a blanket. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a bright colored person. Yeah. I'm very subdued, baby pinks yeah. and muted tones yeah, like and everything. Yes. Pick this, this is I would pick this. Yes. Totally. Mm -hmm. Got it. So I had all my yarn and I said, oh, babe, can you make me one of these 
And he said, sure. So I gave him yarn, and he, I said, you have to learn the magic knot. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, I'll do it for you. He loves winding my yarn. Yeah. You know, it's therapeutic. There's groups yeah. of people in the in the New York Times that, that right? Did you read that? That they were, they were unwound yarn, or Andrea was telling us about that. Someone was telling us about so that. So, like, they would like to unravel a yes. sweater or wind yes. yarn, but not knit or No, anything. that's all balled yeah. up, okay. but they, it's like a puzzle. Uh-huh. Get to the end. Yeah. So I gave it. To Red Bank Mike and he's like yeah sure he watched the video on YouTube there he was he's standing there he wound it into this big cake and everyone went nuts yeah. people at the store were like oh I'll buy that how much is that I want that how much is that like do you have any more him. do you have any more because it's several skeins of yarn in yeah. one like yeah. it's the whole project yeah the whole project that's a, the DK version 700 yards yeah it's called bits and bobs he I names them too yeah bits and bobs. So random yarn is Chelsea Lots DK colors Yes. Oh. So it started out that we were just making little ones, and then people mm-hmm. and I was like, "Wait, um, I want mine. Yeah. You did this so that, to make me yeah. one. Where is mine? I never got one. <laughs> they were all sort of flying out the door and flying out the door. And then he made. I gave him my yarn. I said, "This is mine. Don't sell it." <laughs> and then it really came out nice. And he said, "I would never sell it. That's." And I was so excited. I had my thing and. He made it. People were haunting us on our social media. Like, I want that cake. I have to have it. And he just, there, there was Red Bank Mike was born. And it. he loves it. But his oh. name isn't Mike. It's Tad. <laughs> so why is okay. he Red Bank Mike? All right, Mike? ready? Because he used to be Stan. We used to, we had a nickname for him when we were in Cold Snack that was Stan. Mm-hmm. Was Stan Stockwell. Stan Stockwell. Okay. So he used to stock the shelves. He didn't. But we were like, babe, you know, he helped out with the orders. Tad just sa- didn't sound like... Tad's kind of fancy. Yeah, it was too <laughs> fancy for the... He, we needed some kind of like a worker, like someone yeah. was going to like... Tad's a little yeah. more white collar. Yeah, a little <laughs> desk job. Yeah, you know, yeah. we needed someone to help us out around yeah, the shop. Yeah, like the muscles. We needed the muscles, sweat. the forklift yeah. and everything. So he's yeah. like, yeah, I love... So he signed, started signing orders. Love Stan. Love Stan. Well, when we moved to Red Bank, Stan just didn't, he just didn't, he didn't cut it. Yeah. So Red Bank Mike took I over. I love <laughs> now, has anyone ever seen him on the podcast? So that's the mystery. Can, am I allowed to see a picture of him? Oh, sure. Phone? Yeah. Okay. Okay, show, me, show me what he looks like. I'm going to tell you if he looks like Red Bank Mike. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. So we, we joke around, we want to get the, the enamel pin with the bag over yeah. his head holding a kahuna, right? I think, why did we call it a kahuna? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, talk about why is it called a kahuna. I think he just, he just started, I think, one day. The big kahuna. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what would I make with this? If uh, I were you could you do a shawl. I mean, you have 700 yards, so you could do a shawl. I was thinking about... A little like crop I top. like the little granny square shawl. Oh, that would be yeah. cute. Yeah, that would be really cute. Because then I don't have to think about. Right, you just go. Yeah. And you crochet. I do crochet. Yeah. And I have been lately like finding myself on websites where I think, oh, let me get five colors so I can make a granny mm-hmm. square shawl. But this is done there for me. There you go. Maybe I'll make that. Yeah. I think it would like go really fast and be a good like spring summer thing too. Yeah. Cause it's 700 yards of DK. Uh, so I di- so now I dye all the yarn for him for the kahunas. Well, actually, this says a big mix of fingering superwash merino single sock nylon glitter, but but th- this is but the he DK wrote Lux one. DK. I see. Yeah. So that's what just the label prints, mm-hmm. but then he adds notes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. And this, I think, I think I need like a cardigan. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. Like, isn't there one called the featherweight? Oh yes, yeah. That would be good for yeah. that. Yeah, this would be good, right? Yeah. Yes. Because I keep thinking, like today, I was like, I just want a little cardi yeah. that I can put on. Yeah. Okay, so party. talk about when you started the podcast and why, and why was oh. Miriam? Talk about that. <laughs> Miriam and Miriam was saying. I was obsessed with watching podcasts, uh-huh. and I kept saying, I want, we, we should podcast. We should podcast. Mm-hmm. We should really podcast. And I knew she'd never do it, so it was safe. It was in it that was range safe. of comfort. Like, yeah, but yeah, Christina, we should podcast. And then one day you said, I said, well, I said, yeah, we're, we're podcast. I mean, we said it podcast. for two years. Yeah, like you just we really said it for two years. It. We were toying with it back and forth until this summer. You were off, you know. She has off. She's a teacher, so she's off in the summer. And we said, all right, let's do it. Okay, Sunday we're going to podcast. And I showed up so not we ready for that. I didn't think we were going to do it. We were joking. <laughs> With my we rock like, and roll oh, t-shirt, said, no makeup. She was wearing okay. a Steve Winwood t-shirt. 
and I had on my like bar outfit. You know, I just came back from bar, and I and I, I was like, all right, we're gonna do this. You didn't think we would really post it? I mean, I didn't know anything about editing, but of course, I taught myself how to do that, and there we go. I like it. I think you've really hit your stride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you think that you have seen that you've come, you've come a long way? Yeah, I mean, we you've gotten more comfortable. Like, yeah, yeah, we're definitely you know more I mean? comfortable. Like you yeah. have your, you rip off each other. So yes. Miriam's great. Everyone says you picked the right person for the podcast. Oh. And I said, I, I didn't pick her. We sort of like, you know, we fell into yeah. it. Yeah. And I think that we're great. I mean, we're too opposite, you know, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's fun. Like it's opposite. Like I, I'm very extravagant and, and everything. And you're always like the calm cool and she just leads me in yeah. she just will lead me into it and yeah. I'll <laughs> so far. now do you notice when you put up a podcast that you get sales from it like is that is that happening we do yeah they we do it and yeah they it? yeah 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 a lot I of think people that's a big reason why you should have one if you're a local I, you know we didn't do it for that just for fun. It was just, it this is what we're doing. doing. Just add to your social media. Yeah. So yes. I, I did it because we wanted to talk about the love of our fibers and, you know, I mean, I never in my wildest imagination thought that anyone was going to buy anything from the podcast. First of all, we and never thought anyone would watch it. people to send us stuff. Yeah, oh, she, she <laughs> wanted to do it so she could get free yarn. The only person that ever sent us free yarn was Leon Alexander, bless his heart. Yes. He's from Oklahoma. He sent us a package. That thing went around Red Bank and back. We got it in January. He sent it, it in, in August. August. Yeah, yeah. yeah, September. Really? Yeah. So funny, but duh. Who's going to send a yarn shop she owner yarn? Thought, I mean, <laughs> she thought she'd be getting packages. Get presents. Like, it's send so Miriam <laughs> something. Comment below. We'll give her address. She, she wants was something so free. excited. <laughs> you know, you can make it happen. We'll make it happen. That probably so just funny. made it happen. <laughs> I can't wait now. <laughs> You're going to share. I will. I'll totally I share. It. I love it. Um, <laughs> So you guys are just loving it. You're having fun. It's fun. We're having I a lot really, of fun. I mean, it's 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 definitely fun. I mean, we don't really we don't have show notes or anything. Do no. you have? Do you do show notes? Ah, uh, very very little. Yeah. I expect my people to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I have playlists, and like, if you want to know what I'm wearing, go to the finished objects playlist. It's on there. Okay. I do try not to wear something unless I've already talked about it. Okay. For example, this is the I Heart Cardi. You can go to the finished objects playlist and see all about it. <laughs> Um, what are these? We didn't we didn't talk about all the bases. I, we got distracted Super by my gift, which I did. love. We so did. this is the 100% the merino. Super wash merino, this merino very single. Mm -hmm. I, I like love that's my favorite. Lot. That's my favorite base. And this is that's our DK. Oh, hello. It's my bed. Oh, I like that too. They it's really soft. squishy. Mm -hmm. And then you that's our mohair. mohair. I'm like obsessed with mohair. People are loving the mohair these yeah. days. I don't. Hey, don't you I have an Aaron weight too? We have a chunky. A glitter and a sock. Ooh, a glitter. And then we have a, like Where an alpaca. Oh, you have a lot. Um, you don't have. I mean, you have to. This was. I told her to oh, show yeah. me some of her favorites. Right. My favorites. Those. Um, are my favorites. And so, if you want to come to the Wool Walk, when is it? Uh, April Ooh. the third week in April, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, okay. and twenty-two. Oh, that's the same as Long Island. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. having their um, yarn call then too, which okay. is not oh, anywhere okay. near here, but it's a yeah. good weekend for that mm -hmm. in the spring. I won't be in town for any other. No, town. you're gonna miss it. Uh, yeah, but it is exciting for. Oh yeah, here. Here's the sparkle. Ooh, so this has a little twist in it. The sparkle. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's the sock. And this is the sock with no sparkle. Nice. It's fun. I oh, you do I, so many things. I girl. know. I'm like the jack of all trades. You're a grinder. <laughs> You're a grinder. Okay, what did I miss? What's happening next? So, yeah, we, oh, I'm doing the trunk show at Nitty City, okay, which is right. going to be fun. Yeah, that is really cool. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. that uh, I've never, I never thought that I would, people ask, you know, do you sell your yarn wholesale? And I never thought about it. I was kind of like, no, I like to keep it exclusive. Yeah. When I was at uh, Vogue, Pearl said, we want your yarn. We want you, to, you and Red Bank Mike to come to a trunk show. I can't turn him pro. No, you can't. I mean, turn I've him known pro. her for years. Yeah. I, I mean, she's like iconic in this industry. Yeah. She's Love like an her. icon. Yeah. Like I, who, that's like saying no to, you know. Oh, sorry, oh, I'm Elizabeth not gonna. Zimmerman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Elizabeth. I, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> yeah, Pearl's great. Yeah. So, and my mom is friendly with Pearl. I've known Pearl. My mom is one of her, you know, biggest fans of whatever, and she always goes there. And I said, sure. 
Okay. If there's one shop I'm gonna do it at, it's That's yours. Funny. Yeah. I feel like I always see you and your mom at your events for like mm -hmm. one second, and we're we're both like, hi, bye. Yeah. Like we're always like going opposite directions when we see each other. Yeah. But I, your mom will often have, or you will both have little. We have ears. ears. Andre has the ears too. All three really of us. Yeah. yeah. So we're like the traveling pack. Yeah. I love it. We go all over. Now we we had two bucket lists this year of going to Stitches West and Edinburgh. So yeah. that was really fun. That was really good. Yeah. So I want to do a little tour of the shop before we go, but I instead of nine questions. I'm just asking one this year, so I'll ask it to both of you. Why do you knit? Miriam goes first. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, that is such a tough question to answer because there are so many reasons for it. Um, I knit because I like to create beautiful things, and I knit because it saves my sanity. Mm. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell which is which. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I definitely can say I knit. I like my fingers moving. I like the feel of the fingers moving with the fiber through my hands mm -hmm. and then creating a garment, a hat, or a sock, or something that you can wear. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's amazing. And with all this, you know, mass producing of clothing, you know, away and not in the America, I love sources and things that are made in the USA. Mm -hmm. And, and, knitting it here and not buying it from overseas. When you buy a cardigan, like if you were to buy this, yeah. it would be hundreds, yeah. if not a thousand dollars for a hand knit garment. Yeah. And you can make it yourself mm -hmm. with fiber that's nicer than what's in the stores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I can't, I can't imagine my life without it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Chelsea Pearls of Chelsea Yarns <laughs> and Red Bank Mike. Yeah. We're going to do a little tour. Of okay, so now we're going to do a quick little tour of Chelsea Yarns, and it's such a beautiful store. When you walk in, it's just like clean, organized. I feel like I could shop here all the time, so Thank show you. me what you have. This is our, this is where I have all the Chelsea Lux. Mm -hmm. um, it's all there. I love the candles, by the way. Thank it you. smells always burning. Yeah, it smells so nice. Yes. Okay. Here's we have. This is like a huge major. The pom poms, and this is depleted actually. This is like build a bear. Yeah. It is. You come in and you like create your hat. It's like a hat station. Yeah, it's a hat station. So the shop is set up by weights. Mm -hmm. So we start with fingering weight. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of um, indie dyers. I support a lot of the locals. Yeah. So all the local um, New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, New York, a lot of that. Yeah, I like that. And then we have DK worsted. Nice fancy worsted, you know, like you're, you're yeah. across your own over there, and yeah. then there's the fancy worsted. Um, so everything is. I love how you have the cubbies. I think that well, I think yeah. I like white. Yeah, um, I do too. It's really nice, and you have sweaters. The color. Yeah, and you have sweaters quantities. Yeah, we have sweaters. I see quantity, too. Like most of everything. I mean, yeah. except you know, I mean, there are some things like. Um, Usually, I mean, usually we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's I nice. would definitely say. And here's Red Bank's Mike's uh, little area. So this is where it happens. This, this is where, where the big happens. Kahuna magic this happens. This is what he calls the Kahuna card. Uh huh. I like that. <laughs> so I put a whole bunch of stuff on here, but he's cleared it out since. Um, I love this. This is like a major Swift here. This is the real this deal. This is. Yeah. And it's electric, so I could put it on and walk away. And I love it's, that. It's, it's good. I like this little section. This is nice. Yeah. This is good. You can get the patterns and. Yeah, we don't really use this patterns This is my anymore. favorite love one. That stuff. Hookah Girl is my favorite. Oh, yeah. It's like the best scent. It's a good one. Right there. Mm hmm. And a lot of yarn shops only have the minis, so you just went for oh, the full yeah, size. Yeah. Went for go it. Bigger, go bigger, home. Right? Yeah, big kahuna. <laughs> and here's our worsted. Um, our newest obsession is this. <gasps> Talk about it. Isn't it so good? It's so it's crazy. Yeah. It's I Clinton Hill cashmere. It's, it's so soft. It's so everything. It's special gorgeous. reminder: I'm doing a cow of Clinton Hill cashmere yes. for my 40th birthday. You are. You have till January to save up because it starts January 1st, 2019. Really? Yep, and it ends my birthday in April, 2019. So what are you? You're doing your own pattern? No, we're just using Clinton Hill cashmere. Nice. So we're saving up for the year for our garments worth of Clinton Hill cashmere because oh it's like you have to save forty dollars a month. You do? Starting in That's January. Not that bad. Mm -hmm. Depends month. on the person. Well, yeah. I mean, so, when you think of it that way, as yeah. opposed to like going up the register. And yeah. Like, yeah. So you have one year to save. We're in <laughs> month four now. <laughs> so you can still catch up. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, beautiful. I still have a knit with wool folk. I really want to. It's a, one of our biggest sellers. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. And then we get bulkier and chunkier as we go. This chunky, and then there's the bulky over here, and then we have a hand-dyed, um, a Ooh. lot of the hand-dyed yarns. Primrose, Tosh, Backyard Fibers, like a lot of, you know. The, yeah. Some of our favorites. Yeah. And a little spinning action. A little spinning action. I think I skipped over the samples. Hold on, let's look at these. So you have samples here. Samples on the mannequin. Look how cute. Those, those are baby little samples. I should have a baby, huh? Yeah, you can make a little... <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You can make a little Ugg boots. I, just, I should have a baby Aren't so I can just cute? knit for the baby. No, I'll have grandbabies. So I'll have. Grandbabies. Maybe I'll just start knitting for the grandbabies now. <laughs> Very cute. Listen, my daughter's 16 and I made my mom a grandma when she when I was 22. So it's around the corner. It's around the corner. Okay, and then over here we have the loopy, chunky, chunky, bulky, bulky. Yeah. Love the merino number five. Yeah. I saw that video that you guys did. Oh that gosh. was awesome. I loved, yeah. I loved interviewing them. I love them. them. I mean, I, lo I just love it. Yeah, I so good. Them. And look at your cash wrap. Yeah. It's adorbs. I love all the tassels too. Look at your tassels. Did you make all these? No. They're so cute. Pin action, yes. Yes. Our pins are sold out. We have our own pins. Oh, you do? They're sold, sold out. Them out. I love yeah. it. So it's our fun hacking. I love it. It does feel like home. Yeah. Well done. Be real, wholehearted, creative, vulnerable, humble. There's the humble again. <laughs> You know what I mean? Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much, Christy, for having yes, me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> really good.